Okay, ready? Oh. Clock, clock on three. On three. All right. One, two, three. three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Friday Evening Podcast. Uh, I am Jack Powers, and I'm joined by uh, Drew Smith. Drew, how are you? Doing great, Jack. How are you? I'm <laughs> valuable input, as usual. I'm doing great. Um, it is Friday evening. And we are recording a podcast, and that is why it is named the Friday Evening Podcast. It's a working title. Probably it's won't a, be a Friday every it's, time. It's a working title, and it's never going to be up on Friday, so deal with it. <laughs> but um, that's when we're probably going to record it. Exactly. So, but, so, uh, so suck it. Yeah. So the idea of this show, even though we don't really have it in the title... There isn't one. It's more or less just going to be, you know, stream of consci- consciousness, just shooting the shit, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, because we're such entertaining people. But uh, to start us off, just to kind of uh, give a quick, I guess, overview of our thoughts on things, we're going to spin a wheel. Yeah, let's get that wheel out and let's spin it. We're going we're gonna to determine what we're going to talk about through random chance. Drew, are you ready to spin the wheel? I am so ready to spin this wheel. You we were have... born to spin the wheel, Drew. Well, disclaimer... What's the best way to make any decision in life? The best, Drew. I don't know. Can you tell me the best way to make a decision? Spinning a in life? fucking wheel. Spinning Jack. a fucking wheel. Then that's what we're gonna do. Drew, spin that wheel. So we have a, one of thirty-four options. We will spin it right here. And on the thirty-fourth episode, we're we're fucked. Make a new wheel, or we're just make a new wheel. New, or give up. New show. Or give up. <laughs> new show. Jack, what is your perfect date? Perfect <laughs> date. God damn it. <laughs> My perfect date. Uh, is uh, with a girl. No. It's, um... Preferably a girl. So we... St- prefer- not that there's anything wrong with going on a date with a guy. It's 2017. Um, my perfect date is a living, breathing girl. And we would go uh, to Mount Everest. Um, and I would go... You said perfect, not realistic, right? I mean, if that's right, the perfect right, date for you, shit. sure. So we go to Mount Everest. Right? Assuming you don't die once you get we there. Go but... Ab- we go to Mount Everest um, at uh, way early in the morning, like three in the morning, four in the morning. Okay. We go there really early before the sun's come up, if the sun hasn't come up. That- Regardless, we go up there and we go to the top. We just go to the top of Mount Everest. It's really easy. I've done it thousands of times. Of course. And we, um, and we get there and it's just me and her. Uh, in really nice clothing. Uh, we don't need hiking clothes, fuck that. Um, we get up there, and as the sun uh, 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 manifests itself crest, over the crest horizon, over the... over the horizon, right? Tears fill her eyes. I get down on one knee, and I propose to her on the first date. Because honestly, you can't just top that. You, That's kind of the peak of the relationship on the I mean, Jack, if I, if I was that lucky yeah. lady going with you, yeah. and you had brought me to Nepal, you wish, and we had gone to an elevation of 29,029 <laughs> feet, okay, and I was, I didn't fl- say it was, <laughs> and I was freezing my ass off, yeah, and, yeah, but then you proposed to me, I mean, I would die. You'd say yes! Oh, oh. <laughs> With with thrill, <laughs> you so die. happy that you've done that. To you me. would die. Yeah, I propose to your corpse, essentially. No, but I mean, I promise you. But I die with someone I loved. And the what? You die with someone you loved from the very first day. That's okay. an experience. I mean, I wouldn't know anything about you, but I you know to, that saying. you this this stranger had flown me out to Nepal and yeah. said, "Hey, let's go up the tallest fucking mountain th- in the world." I think that's very sweet. I think that's. Uh, my perfect date. And then, if we've survived the climb, that is, we uh, spend the whole day together on top of the mountain in the thin-ass air. With the, with the monks? The with Tibetan the, monks? With the Tibetan monks, whatever the hell. The Nepalian monks, whatever the fuck. Um, and we just uh, meditate on our future life together. Um, tr- attempt not to die. That's a big, that's a big issue. Optional, then, but... It was optional. Pre- preferable. <laughs> yep. Breathing. Breathing is preferable. And then we uh, go back down and uh, make sweet, sweet love uh, and have a bunch of babies. That is my perfect date. Drew, what so that's is a, your... That's a, top, top that shit is what I say. Top that? Well, my solution probably not have, you know, death in right, the near right. future. I'm already not as good. 
already. I mean, I do agree that you need to like spice things up a little bit, right? It, with death. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, perfect date. Yep. So, ladies, take note. I guess guys take shit. <laughs> All right, ladies. I... <laughs> so, uh, imagine this. Oh uh, yeah. You and me. We're, we're already doing this close to my thing. Fuck yeah. Oh, <laughs> but uh, you and me, you and you and me, ladies. All, all ladies. Well, this this could be any lady. Doesn't matter because this or is how men. perfect. The... Or men. It's twenty. It's twenty seven. I mean. Continue. Anyways, perfect date. Perfect date for me. I don't know. I'm I'm a simple guy. Preferably, I'd have a sim simple woman with me. But you know, I think we just kind of ride around. Look at the sunset. Oh my God. On what? What are you riding around on? What? I uh, a horse. A car. A, ca a car. So we go. God. We go to car, and so we're riding a car, right? Uh, yeah. We're riding in this car. You know where we go? Where do you, where do you go in the car? NASA. Mm. So we go to no. NASA. Fucking no. And then I talk to my best friend, man who owns NASA, Mr. Give him, give him a minute. Stall. <laughs> <laughs> I just take up time. Miss, uh, Mr. Bolden. Bolden. And me, me and my good pal, Charles. I'd be, hey, Charles, can I take the Challenger 5? Can I? And we'd go up in the Challenger. You know, the non-functioning rocket <laughs> that we have on display no, at NASA? The, it's the fifth one, though. It's the fifth one, though. <laughs> so we go up to the Challenger. Which one exploded? Uh, the first Challenger. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is four non-exploded rockets. <laughs> I think there's only been one Challenger, too. <laughs> but we're in Challenger 5 at this time, right? Um, so we go up to Challenger 5 and right. also say, hey, hold on to your fucking seat. Right. And we take off. You you take off, and then we we get in space, and, and this time <laughs> that's how it works. You just get in space, and then she looks out and she sees the stars, right? And I said, "Hey, look at where we were, Earth." She looks at Earth, right? And you know how like the Great Wall of China, you can see that from space. That's false, but yes, but, but okay. okay. That's false, well, but so sure. she would look down at the Earth, and on the Earth it would say, "Down to fuck." God damn it. And she would go, "Oh my god! How did you top me? <laughs> <laughs> you completely top me." So it's, it would it would say just DTF. Would it just say the it would just say the I mean, letters? So are we assuming this first date or just a, the perfect date? Oh shit! I was thinking you it was assume, the first date. Yeah, we'll just we'll just we'll just play it's perfect date. Just perfect date. Perfect date. Perfect okay, date. so let's say this is a girl that I'm head over heels with. All right. And then I'd be so like, "I've been going steady for what, like twenty years now." Yeah. That I haven't proposed to her yeah. after 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Let's say um, 10 years, right? 10 years we've been doing whatever. And um, so it's been 10 lovely years of doing what we do. And so I'd just probably put her name. Sure. Just her oh, name on the planet. That's sweet. And I'd say, hey. That's so sweet. I know most people call it Earth. Right. But your signature is somewhere in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. That's... Okay. <laughs> well, is there like a climate? Like... Like, it and then, all then, seems like the climax. Clearly, the climax of mine is I propose marriage to her on top of fucking Mount Everest. Well, like, so, so I see her name there, and she goes, oh my, oh my god, Drew. Right. That's my name. Right. And I go, that, that's your name. Yeah, Veronica, that is your name, right? And if you marry me, that's just the beginning of what we can do together. Holy, what, what do you accept? What do you, what do you, what do you... <laughs> that's right, I'm so going to top that. So I'm going to top that. This is, the, this is the rising action? This is the rising action. Like, like... This is not the climax of your relationship. This is just like your twenty-year relationship. This is just this is okay. This is we've been dating for a while, gone steady for a while, and this right. this is this is the climax. This is what I'm proposing to her. Oh, all right, all right. So but I'm not propose marriage. Does it say will you? Why did we both propose marriage on our birthday? Because <laughs> it's perfect. Well, what's, I guess. what's more perfect than finding somebody to spend then, the rest of your life with? Right. Because love is dead. I, that too, <laughs> that too. No, it's uh, serious. I'm sure, like, um, fucking, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, marriage rates are at an all time low. Uh, divorce rate, well, no, okay, the story is divorce rates are, are, are decreasing because marriage rates are also decreasing because people realize that they can fuck without marrying the person, right? We're at a kind of a weird time. It's kind yeah. of like, like a, almost like a sexual revolution part two. I thought that was the 60s, yeah. But that was the tw so the 20s was like when like... The 20s? No, the 20s, yeah. So the 20s is when like ladies were like, I'm going to show a little bit of leg. Oh, fuck. And then people were starting That is when like club dancing and shit. Yeah, that's, the, that's when people that's maybe start... Late, late 1800s. Yeah. Uh, well, well, early 1900s, we'll just, say. Just, yeah. And so we're... um. 
So that's when people started getting more, a little bit more risque, putting themselves out there. So I mean, the sixties is when we get free like love. You get some free love, love, like Playboys and shit. And then now we just have whatever. The why, fuck why, why put a ring on it, right? I, guess I don't want no man to hold me down, Jack. You, or woman, or woman. Women can have just as much power over a man as men have. Or it. You know, we're in tw- 2017. 2017. You, you know what the you, year of 2015 can, was? I learned that? this the other day. What's that? They. The year of they? No, that, the what? word of 2015 was What's they. Because like T-H-E-Y. Like, yes, the word they. Fucking why. Because that word apparently was could be used for anything because like people don't necessarily identify as man or woman. Oh, for the love of so, God. Like, like pronouns. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they was a word that applies to everything. It's the perfect word because it can do no harm. Okay. Have you ever met a transgender person? I actually haven't. Have you? I, I've been I've been served by, I think, a couple in the service industry. One, was it Barnes & Noble? What kind One, of service industry? <laughs> I, one, was it Barnes & Noble? Oh, yeah, the book fucking service industry. Um... It was this... Trannies like books. Wait, am I right? Everyone loves Bookster. Put, put that on a shirt. Trannies like, like books. books. That's, that'll be the title of the episode. No. Um, I, um... Or was it... I believe it was Barnes & Noble. Whatever. The point was, it was... Yeah, it was their music department. Um, it was this person named... I think, like, Daryl. Or maybe Darrell. The person was black. I'll admit, like maybe Darrell. I could speaking, be wrong. Speaking of Darrell, for all those who don't know, my car's your, name is your Darrell. car's name is Darrell, and why is it named Darrell, Drew? Um, I have a rare brown. It's car. brown. It's brown. It's brown. I'll, um, at this point, I'll, I'll put we'll, we'll put up a picture of Darrell. That's, Here's a picture I, of Darrell. That's, that's yeah. Darrell's up there right Darrell's now. Up there. Hi, Darrell. L- love you, champ. What up? <laughs> all right, but anyways, Daryl, Darrell, whatever. Darrell, or or like or like. Terrell, I don't know, maybe I'm just race, racistly putting a name on this black person, but like, the person like had a deeper, a deeper voice, Okay. short hair, but then had earrings, uh, tattoos, uh, lipstick, eyelash, it was the strangest combination of like, like, we'll fuck you up, but also I like to we'll be treated well, <laughs> yeah, also we'll fuck you. Like, it was the strangest combination. I didn't know how to say I was just like, thank you. Like, I didn't want to say, like, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Because you never want to assume that shit. Thank you, person. But thank you, human being. I guess thank you, they. If, you, if we're using your <laughs> it. word of the year idea. <laughs> like, I think they respond well to it. Personally, goodness gracious. But I, so you've never met any, any transgender people? Not to my knowledge. Like, they're totally going to be a transgender knowledge. person. And I was just you're like. Just like what if your friend... What if and I was like, that's a dude. And yeah, it totally yeah. wasn't a and dude. suddenly he's like, Drew, that was a woman. I'm like, fuck. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey man, sexuality is weird, okay? And this is coming from just two straight-ass white men. You know what's just just sound interesting about what's, Barnes & Noble? What's that? Well, I guess it's... So, so you this say, is us now, yeah? You went, you went to the music stri- uh, section. I think so, yeah. Their vinyl collection, their CD stuff. Yeah, so that's, that's such a... Like forgettable part of Barnes and Noble. I guess it's like. it's under at least at my local one. It's under the stairs. It's, it's really kind of hidden yeah. away. It's fucking hidden away. Because like you go jealous. you go up the two twin escalators. There you go. Yeah. And then you look and you can see like oh young adult novels, right. romance, right, right. whatever, anime. Um, actually, I will say one thing. It's manga. Oh if my uh, gosh, you're shit. if you're gonna be reading, hey, yeah, look, we just, please don't just chastise me. Um, but I um. One one time I, I went into Barnes and Noble. I go there a lot. Suddenly, um, I, the up escalator was functioning, right? Yeah. But the down escalator wasn't functioning, and it was closed off. So not only was it just stairs at this point, you also couldn't get down. You couldn't get down. You like it was just so, all I saw as a means of transportation between the two so levels was that, the that kind of defeats the Mitch Hedberg thing. It does. <laughs> it does. We apologize for the temporary convenience, like. Like, there was absolutely no way to get down from the second. Yeah. It was the most bizarre fucking thing I'd ever seen. I mean, is there some hidden elevator? Is there some hidden flight of stairs that I do? I have no clue. To my knowledge, that's the only way up or down. Yeah, what the... F- so people were some- just trapped upstairs. <laughs> like, like, what if we had just seen, like, member Like, <laughs> hanging from the rails, just help me! Just, like... I, I just want the new Andy just a, Yeah, just, just a bunch of hipsters just being like, we need more coffee. <laughs> just shit like that. No, they're, um... Their cafe is pretty nice. Um, this uh, it's usually Starbucks, right? I was about to say. Speaking of Starbucks, this this broadcast brought to you by Starbucks Coffee. Na- Starbucks named after a Moby Dick character. Named after Starbuck. Really? Starbuck. Yeah, that's why they were going to call it. 
Oh god. I think they're going to call it something else. Like they A start, Ahab's start, White <laughs> Whale. <laughs> yes, they were going to call it Moby Dick's coffee. <laughs> and then Starbucks it was it's named after a character in Moby Dick, Starbuck. Um founded in Seattle, Washington, of course. Um like it was originally, Moby. yeah. Uh, history founding the first Starbucks. Uh, it was going to be. Oh, they were. Yeah, they were after considering Cargo House and Pequod. Pequod is the name of the uh, the ship in Moby Dick. The Pequod, I believe. Yeah, the company took the name of the chief mate in the book Moby Dick, Starbuck. Huh. Um. Cool. Yeah. How 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 wicked is that? We learned. That. Don't tell us. We never teach you anything here on the yeah, podcast. Yeah. Don't say you learn something fucking new every 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 day. That's all I'm saying. Meanwhile. Also, disclaimer, Starbucks does not sponsor us, but yeah, you know, we love them so much Starbucks, that we'll Starbucks, go ahead and give them a shout-out. Starbucks out. gives us no money, but we'd like for Starbucks to give us money, so that's why we're just holding our Especially after our first podcast. Yeah, this is, I think this is a pretty good start, so far. Yeah, um, we'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, um, I have become addicted to uh, uh, Tetris Friends. To te- I've become re-addicted to Tetris. I mean... Like, that's, a, that's you know, Tetris is one of the most simple games on the fucking planet, right? You have these Tetraminos, or whatever the hell they're called, and you're just trying to get Tetrises and doubles and triples and all this crap, and then they added an online ranking system, and that just blew it out of the fucking moon for, like, I play that game so much, and the rest of my life suffers from it, right? Yeah. Like, I just, I've become a recluse, I've become just a sweaty, gross recluse in my room, just playing Tetris for it's it's a problem. I Jack, I, need, you, I, go, I go to a group twice twice a week. Jack, have you made any Tetris friends? No, no, <laughs> no. All of them came from real life who were like, "Oh shit, I want to play that too." And it's spreading to other people. I'm corrupting my fellow friends who were just like, "Yeah, I used to get work done, and now uh, I don't do to Tetris friends." Like I'm just I'm spreading like like work ethic aids to all of our friends. I don't know what the hell to do. I mean, do you do you have any solutions to my Tetris friends addiction? Um, get a life. Okay. Th- th- okay, some other ones. <laughs> other than that. Other um, than that. I don't know. I mean, so Tetris friends is one of those games that I never really got into. Like you I I suck. Because I think Tetris Arguably the perfect game, right? One of the it's it's I believe it is the highest selling uh, game. Well, I'm, I'm oh just, no, never mind. That's Wii Sports. Never mind. Yeah. Wii Sports takes that. I'm just talking in terms of like game design. It's the perfect game. Of course, because yeah, there's so nothing wrong with it. There's nothing that I could be like, oh, you should add that. Or like even right. today, they're still making iterations of like mobile games or whatever, right. and they haven't added anything really to the Tetris formula. No, no, of course not. I mean, Tetris Friends attempts to do that, right? They have games like a sprint. You try and uh, like complete twenty lines and as fast as you can, or some shit like that, or six player. They have they have battle Tetris where you send lines to the other person. It's goddamn. Also, uh, quick sidebar: the original on the original cover of Tetris on the NES. Not the Kremlin, cover, right? They, it had no. Actually, at least what I'm looking at right here on Wikipedia, um, my favorite tagline for any Russian produced entertainment uh, entity is "From Russia with fun." I, d- I think that's be- I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I don't think James Bond would be thank too happy. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Alexei uh, Pazidnov and Vladimir Pokhiko. <laughs> those are the two creators. Those are two designers, at least. But um, what were we talking about? Yeah, they've tried to vary the Tetris formula, but I at mean, its core, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's still it's still fucking Tetris. Still four blocks and varying. Formats You're not. F- yeah, they're all the same. The, of the, the same number of goddamn blocks. It's it's just ridiculous. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do. Uh, it's whatever. Uh, it's uh, it's a crippling addiction. Find a new outlet. <laughs> Find a new outlet. I don't know. Maybe this could be it. Maybe. I mean, I like I know that game, and um, you know, one of the match threes, like Bejeweled or something like that, are, yeah. are like have been proven to be good stress relievers. Yeah, they're they're hypnotic, and I find myself, um, you know, when I close my eyes, go to sleep at night, I, I'm I play Tetris in my mind. Like it's that effect. I believe that's actually. An do you effect. hear? No, I do not just hear that. No, I do not hear that. Uh, hang on. That's a Russian um, folk song. Yes, it is. Yeah. It has lyrics and shit, too. It's like about a peddler and like a guy trying to get a potion for his wife to get him to love him again. It's very so strange. Um, the Tetris effect, also known as Tetris syndrome, occurs when people devote so much time and attention to an activity that it begins to pattern their thoughts, mental images, and dreams. Jack, you might have a problem. I think I have a, pro- I have a problem, is what I'm saying. 
Um, in this sense, the Tetris effect is a form of hip, hypnagog, hip, hypnagogic imagery. Hypnagogic, hypnagogic, I don't know. Hip, hypnogenic? Hip, hip, no, it's H-Y-P-N-A-G-O-G-I-C. That's weird as hell. It's so strange, but yeah, I, so before I go to bed, I just see all these little tetraminas just falling and making lines, and I don't know what the hell to think of them. Do you play the game in your head, or is it just kind of... I think I just see the patterns. I can't so, play. So I don't see know like a game Continual now. blocks yes, of yes. legs falling. It's back. like it's like after you play Guitar Hero or something like that. Like, you... you I've got you. To it's, like, it's like when you drive a car too long, and you get yeah, out, and the world out, keeps the moving. The world is just, okay. it's just terrifying. Yeah, that's I kind of got. That's you. basically what I'm going for. It's 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 wacky. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had that before. It's, it's a problem. I've had it with huh, several games. Like I've had dreams Lord. about games. Like I've dreamed of myself playing a video game when I went to bed after playing the video Holy game. Shit. Like I've done that before. And then you woke I, up and you're like, I can just do that in real life. <laughs> that's the saddest but, fucking. I mean, but I I mean personally, I made a more interesting game in my head. Oh, I my think, but God. still, it's that's bizarre. I've never like heard of such a effect like that before. No, that's really funny. I've I've had dreams before where I've actually been glad that I've woken up from them. Like like, yeah, like dreams where like someone died and I was like, oh, uh, and I was like, thank God that was a dream. It's called nightmares, Jim. Oh look, I mean, yes, but like a lot of people like I don't know, it's it's, it's like intensely real. Yeah, it's really, really real to where you're like, oh, thank God that's not reality. What's like the craziest dream you've ever had. Oh god in fucking heaven. I had this wallet when I was a kid. <laughs> I had a wallet, hang on, I had a wallet from the ESPN Zone, which is that old... I miss the ESPN Zone. I miss it so much. For those of you that don't know, the, I think they were kind of world, or nationwide, I but think... ESPN Zones were basically like an arcade with, with only sports games, yeah. and downstairs it had this giant screen. Oh my god, it, it, was, it was nuts. It was a giant screen with like 12 screens on either side just playing any sporting event it was in the world at that insane. time. And it was some of the coolest sports games like you'd ever play. Like it had right. a like a simulated bowling alley, like horseback riding, so yeah. like like all the racing games, like the standard stuff like that. I had this really trippy ass watch that had hockey players on it, right? Oh, it's a watch? Uh, not a watch, pardon me. Wallet, 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 wallet. Okay. And it had this weird nineties bright, vivid neon aesthetic to it. And it was images of hockey players, I believe it was hockey players playing hockey and I got from the ESPN zone. And um and I had a dream that I was in that wallet. <laughs> that I that I that everything was neon and that I was watching this hockey game and like going into the locker room so like, of this wallet. It's, it's very like, hard to explain. It's like the uh oh what's the aha song? Take on me. Take on it's me. Like, it's, like, on. it's like the music video, a but it's all bit, neon. Honestly, now. yeah, a little bit. You went into the cartoon. That's that's how I saw it as well. I was like five or six when this happened. That's kind of cool. It was so strange, and like I went, yeah, I think into the locker room and shit. It was the weirdest thing, and I remember, yeah, being in my trippy ass wallet for. I'll try and find it. I don't think. It, I don't think it. It's just the weirdest. Do you still have that wallet? I know. I don't think I do anymore. I had it in my childhood, and it was this yeah, it's bright green, bright pink, bright. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, you've seen it on the screen by this point. I don't even fucking know. It was. It was. It, if not, I had a dream that was, I had a dream that I was just on hallucinogenic drugs. I just had a dream that I was inside this. this I've world. never had like a Sergeant Pepper dream or anything like that. That's before. fair. I don't, I don't think. Oh, there was one where like most of my dreams are pretty like. No. Oh, this happens. Oh, no. no and then I go, no. wake up and go, oh, that no, I've did had, not. I've had dreams where, like, storms sucked me away and into a... I have, I've had dreams, like, in The Wizard of Oz, essentially, is what I'm saying. And then I've had... God damn, dreams are just strange. And then a lot of them predict the future in some fucking way or another. I've had a lot of deja yeah. vu dreams, but the craziest dream I ever had was a, was a dream that I'd want to make into a movie. Oh, all right. Like, okay. Drew's dream. <laughs> So, so that so <laughs> scene one. The idea of this dream okay, is this is like a thesis statement. Yeah. So you so it's um you find yourself you just wake up and you're in this room. So it's an escape the room. Continue. Okay. So you're so you're in a room, and this room is just like a room whatever. Um, and there's a door in front of you. Right. And there's also a door behind you. Okay. okay. And so like you're the, the bed's just like jutting out of the side. Is this the Stanley parable? It, kind of, okay, kind right, of. Right, right, but right. so what happens is that you wake up, do whatever, and then you go through the door, and as you go through the door, and the door door closes, and you can't go back through it, right? Okay, okay so you're trapped. 
Yeah, but see, this new room, all of a sudden, you were in your office where you work. Stanley Parable, yes. And, and so you... This was before I even played the Stanley Parable. What in the hell? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, like, I'm in this place where I work and whatever. Right. And so, like, I do that, and then I go through... But the, it's still one room. Okay. And there's only one door at the at, behind it and one door in front of it. So you're in the same room? No, it's, it's a different room. It's a different it's room. It's an office room. So then I open up the door, and then all of a sudden I'm in a bar. And then this bar, I'm with my friends and whatever. And, right. And so, like, it's like people are there. And it's like right. regular, like, scenarios. But every time I go through a door, I go into this new room. What and then, the but there's only one door okay. on either side. So you only have one way to progress. Only one way to forwards. progress. Which you keep going forwards, but and then you go to, for life. Yeah, then you go into the you go into uh. So you're in the bar. You leave the bar and you're in your room again. Oh, for fuck's sake! And it's just this cycle of like a of room, room, bar, room, of, room. Uh, no, it's three room, room office, room something, bar. room. Something. And then like also there'd be like periodic like just like a, a long Home. a long hallway that like looks like you're outside but you can tell you're not outside fucking a and so it's like it's like an endless straight passage what's what's the title of this movie um, i don't know because I, I had a storyline that went on like oh, fucking... it, it became very truman show like right like right, right. cuz like i would talk to my friends and i'd be like Hey, like, why can't we go back there or anything? Because you wake up and you don't know this. Fucking hell. Because you just wake up and all of a sudden oh, you're here. And, and, and your friends don't realize that you're trapped in this. Yeah, but, but then all of a sudden, like, it's people, like, you can tell that I think they know what's up. What in that? And so, like... So it's kind of like, have you seen The World's End? The, uh, Cornetto Trilogy? Yes, the Cornetto Trilogy movie. Have you seen that? I've not seen it. Regardless, the, the premise of The World's End is that... They're going to all the bars. Right? They're going to all the bars, and their town has been taken over by aliens. Yeah. Now, yeah. And some people have been replaced by these robots and stuff, yeah. these alien robots. Okay. And some people are still real people. Yeah. And they have to distinguish between them. And the real people, like, they have to act as if they're, like, happy and a part of the program and, like, really nice. So, like, maybe they could be those kinds of people who just, like, have to act like they don't know what's going on, but then in reality... The whole fucking systems against you. Well, what? But why I said it was like the Truman Show is that like it, the like narrative that came in my mind is right. that they were they're, like there'd be times where like they'd be like shit he fucking knows or whatever, oh. and they would like oh. get out. So you'd have your uh, elevator opening to staff yeah. members. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so just like imagine scenes of like trying to go through the door that closes or trying to keep the doors open oh, so sweet. I can travel in between, but they oh. always close. Like I, mean, I just thought it was a really interesting. That's, dream. No, that's nuts. That would be. I wonder, like, how you'd even end that. You just well, walk so, out. Well, so the idea that I had, it was just, like, super fantastical. I'd probably change it if I Christ. made this a real thing. And then we're workshopping it. We're workshopping but, um, it. so, like, imagine three blocks, right? Right. Th- like, this room. And what happened, and so, like, it, uh, I'll try and do my best at describing this. But, um, so you have three rooms side by side. Okay. The room in the front is, like, your bedroom. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you go into the office room, then the room, like, a crane brings it over. Fucking. And then it just kind of, like, stacks on on, on itself. Right, right, kind right. of like, you know, when you play, um... Portal 2, kind of Portal, ish. or like, you know you know that dumb game for, like... You know, like, baseball, it's like, who who gets the bat first? And so they do hands each on top of each oh, other. Shit. And then whoever wins yes, puts their hands, yes, like, yes, flat. Yes. It's right. It just keeps building and going infinitely. It's not like there's infinite rooms of the same room. Is that they just keep yeah, reusing they just keep it. reusing the same fucking room. And I can't get so, out of it. So, so, if you knock over a lamp in the room, then you leave that room, then you come back to it, that lamp's still going to be knocked over? Or... Well, I, let's, um, I think in my version, it's like, it's like replaced, or everything is like put back to its original position. Right. But, um, it's like... It's still that same room, so it's 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 not like an infinite hallway or anything. Okay. It's just um like like a set in a movie. Oh. So it leaves, and then the, like a cleanup crew goes, and they so clean like up, a, and everything. Like a Groundhog Day esque thing, where no, no every nothing you do matters. It continues to reset. I think, I think you're the not way, immortal. I think the way I saw it was like it's kind of like a social experiment. Like you meet like the god of this place. Or oh, whatever. sweet yeah. Christ! So that real yeah, thing. Yeah, but, right. but but the ending, like but my uh, the scene that I came up with is that he just oh, busts yeah. through all the rooms oh, really quickly. Oh, so, and they can't and keep, they, they can't keep up with it. Like and he gets them. to the it's edge. Efficient system. Yeah, and he gets to the edge and he goes oh, sh-, and then like almost falls off and everything. And, and he gets he gets cut in half by rooms. He's cut in half by rooms. I didn't come with like a concrete ending, but that that was a scene that I was like. That would be a cool movie, though, that, right? That would be weird as shit. That's, I encourage everybody who's listening to him to play the Stanley Parable because it has a similar-ish 
that thing. Is, it, it messes with your mind in that sense. For anybody who's interested in writing or some kind of, or really just game design in general, it subverts everything you know about the medium. Yeah. It makes something really cool. It's wild. It. For me, although, I mean, it's not technically replayable in my opinion. Although there are a shit ton of endings to it. Like, There's, I thought that it was cool at first. Like, like four, never, 14 endings. There's no godly like amount of endings. I've, I've had the ending... And I suppose, spoiler alert for anyone who's attempting to play the game, we had the ending where you go to the museum that is the Stanley Parable that Museum, was trippy, yeah. and that you just look at how they made the game in the game. It's, it's, yeah. it's fucking we'll, we'll try and keep it pretty spoiler free. Right. Just because I, I would highly recommend anybody check this out. It's only. It was 20, I haven't even seen all the endings. It was 20 bucks when it came out, or even like. Oh, it goes on sale. Yeah, it goes on sale, I'm sure. And um, honestly, this is one of those games that you could probably just look it up online. And and still you, get the experience. You don't I mean, really it's have to play. to play it, but at the same time, like the, the game really focuses on the illusion of choice. Oh yeah, it's not because like in a game like that game is so linear. Oh, I forget. But yeah, I what forget it does, about how it tells you what. To do. Yeah, but the the best part of that game, hands down, is the narrator. Oh, of course, he is voiced to perfection. Right. He is funny, but he's also scary at the same time. I agree. Let's see. There are. Um, so, because, like, the game has, like, if you follow everything the game tells you to do, right. it ends in, like, like 10 I mean, minutes, yeah, 5, 10 short, minutes, short, and yeah. it's fine, but it's nothing, like, you wouldn't buy the game for that reason, right? right? Mm-hmm. But also what's amazing, there's a demo for the game, so download the demo, but the demo... There is? Yeah, there's a demo, but oh, the that thing, must be trippy the thing about the demo is, it's its own game. Right. It doesn't, look, it doesn't have any of the endings or anything, yeah. it, like, messes with your mind, and that, that will give you a good idea... Of what you're going to be looking yeah, at. It's like to play the entire. Yep. Yeah. Wait, so we'll see. We'll still see looking, at, still looking at pictures of the ESPN zone. God damn, that place was fun. It's very late 90s. There, there are 19 endings to that. 19? Game. That's an ungodly amount, whatever. Uh, Probably uh, Valve. On, on, <laughs> was that Valve? That's not Valve. It's, it's, oh. it's used the Source engine. Oh, okay. okay. But it's not a Valve thing. It's it's a, an independent team. I think they're called uh, Galaxy oh, yeah. Cafe. I, st- I straight up thought that Valve made that. Like, I don't know. It seems so well it's made. It's gr- so polished. What's all awesome is that that announcer um, right. for Dota 2, you can get him to announce your Dota 2 matches. Oh, what the hell? Because nuts. Th- the game was, like, so loved. Um, right. It's it's really a game that I, I really don't want to talk about it all that much because it completely blows you away with its endings. It's nuts. No, you need to you need to experience it for yourself, in my opinion. We can only describe it so so much. Um, but yeah, look it uh, look it up if you want, or buy the game. It's a game that I would recommend supporting, right? Like to give the people money. They made another game I haven't played yet, but apparently does the same thing of like messing with narrative structure and defining. What a game is. Jesus. Yeah, during the game design. It's probably the funniest game I've ever played. Really? And this is it's a dark humor. It's it's, it's appropriately fair. funny and interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I just love that game. I, I, I haven't played it in a long time. I'll have to give it a, a, a replay, but um I, it isn't super replayable because once you know an ending, it's not right. gonna change. No it's yeah, yeah but it's um pretty static. But well, that's fair. I've played it with uh, my my cousin before. Oh shit! And um, and you know you know it's I know, good. I know it's, yeah, I, I know it's gonna <laughs> I know it's gonna happen. And right. um, but at the same time, I'm still being able to witness his reaction to it. Right, that's another. Problem. It adds a new it's layer, especially right. when you know it. So yeah, everybody check out. Let's see, Stanley Parable, uh, 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 Tetris Friends. Um, and Starbucks. Mount Starbucks, and most importantly. Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks. We sell coffee. Starbucks. Like a, like a, a buck like, of like star. A, like a whore sells her body. Now, um, <laughs> now, Drew, what, what, what if, what, what have we learned today, Drew? What, what would you say is like the thesis statement to our time together? If you were to learn <laughs> one thing from this podcast, it would probably be who Jack and I kind of are. Yeah. You know, it's kind of understanding yeah. what dynamic just, we have. Just the, just the complex. <laughs> really, just the, the, the fucking... The scholars. The and scholarly stuff. connection that Drew and I have to one another. And yeah. I do mean that section. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're not gay. We're not, um, we're not, we promise. Um, but, but, uh, I suppose... But, yeah, this is kind of something that we, um... I've enjoyed doing it t- for this first kind of practice run right. so far. Yeah, um, I think just it, it's working out the kinks. Yeah, it's something that we'll probably try again. Do some other. Th- um, who knows? We might do other things with this. 
Um, or or not. Or not. Or, or, May, or maybe or nobody or will ever look at this. Or it's going to crash and burn. And we'll just, you know, we'll kill Drew, ourselves. Drew's the, Drew, I was just about to say, Drew's the optimist, but I think I'm wrong. <laughs> so Drew's the optimist, I'm the pessimist, and then uh, we'll, we'll just kill ourselves if it doesn't go well. Please, uh, uh, no one, so, no one kill themselves. So, so th- no, no, this is our suicide. Oh though. my god. If you don't share this to at least five people, we're we will kill ourselves. <laughs> it's, a, it's a murder suicide. I'm going to kill Drew, and then I will kill myself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to this inaugural episode of the Friday Evening Podcast. I was and will continue to be Jack Powers, and uh, across the table from me is Drew Smith. Drew, any closing remarks? And I may or may not continue to be my, uh, myself Drew Yourself, Smith. Drew Smith. I don't know, I could pull a Chad Ochocinco or something I like agree. that. You might experience a spiritual rebirth in Jamaica and be called Or I could I'd become, um, you know, a transsexual woman. That too. You could become... Uh, know, maybe you'll see me and I'll be you Darrell. Could, you could become... Uh, what's the girl equivalent to Andrew? Andrea. Andrea. Or and just Drew. Note, Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Drew Barrymore. One of the hottest Drews, right? Um, <laughs> okay. What? All right. We just, we just thought we'd we just thought we'd get that quick Drew Barrymore burn in before we had to. Hey, Drew Barrymore, if you're out there watching this, Drew Barrymore, we love you. We love. We great love, name. We great love name. You, Drew. Great name. We support it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. This is, this is us signing off. Uh, 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 live long. And, and but but in all serious, seriousness, oh, shit. please share this to somebody if you like yeah, what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah. This is something that you know it's a fun experiment. But if check my too. If, <laughs> if you like this, if you want us to keep doing this, please um, let us know that. We and need your feedback. We desperately need notes because we're just we're just off. We're just off the two title idiots off. who decided, hey, maybe people want to hear us talk. That will be the title of our podcast. Two idiots who decided, hey, people just want to hear us talk. Yeah, we're just gonna be a. Uh, Tentative title. It's got a good ring to it. It's got a good ring to it. It's off the tongue. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Farewell.